Hi everyone, I'm Charles Ranavira. Welcome to the training program for PMD certification. So today I have selected a one topic from the time management knowledge area. So today we are discussing critical path method or we call it CPM. Uh, I will list one, two, three reasons as to why we are using this in project management. First thing is by using CPM we can identify the project expected finish date and uh, for each event what is the float available. Float means the time which you can shift the project a particular event without impacting the expected finishing date and most importantly you can find out the critical path that means you can't delay any event which lies in the critical path without impacting your expected change, uh, expected project finishing date. So here I have drawn a box. Now you need to remember this box. Take this as an event. So this is, uh, I have listed ES which is the earliest start date. Here EF which is the earliest finishing date. LS stands for the last start date. LF is the last finishing date. D is the expected duration. So let's do an example. Here I have given a project which has one, two, three, four, five events. So let's see now let's assume we will start this event at day zero. Now zero is our earliest start date. So given the duration is 3, we will have earliest finishing date of 3. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, I will use a method called forward pass method. In this method, I will use a start date. I will add the duration, so I have the earliest finish date. So immediately after finishing event here, I can start this event. We'll call it event A, B, C, D, E for our easy reference. Okay, let's start our event at day 3, that is our ES. Given 10 days of duration, we will finish it at 13th. So you got it, right? So we will uh, continue this to the remaining event as well. So I will start event C at 13, I will finish it at 17. So what about this part? So same for here. We start here. We will finish it at 9. We will uh, start it at 9. We will finish it at 17. From here, we see that before starting event C, we have to complete event D and E. Seems like event E takes much longer time than event B. So this is the determining event before starting event C. So we will change this, that is we can't start event C at 13th, but of course we can start it at 17th. Then our earliest finishing for C will be 21st. Right. And we have done the forward path. Now we will do the backward passing method. Here, now, we will fill these boxes, LS and LF, same as here, because we are finishing because we are expected to finish the project at 21st. So that means at least we should start. That is the latest time we can start event C is 21 minus 4, that is 17. Right. That means we can finish, we have to finish event E at 17. So we will start 9. How do I get it? 17 minus 8 with 9. That means I finish 9 here. Three. Okay, now we have completed our forward pass and backward pass, right? So we can see here the values I have arrived are similar, 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 and similar. So, oh, we can fill here as well. So, uh, going through this path, we come here, right? So this represents the most important path for your 
project to be completed within the expected time. This is your critical path. You don't have any float here. Your float is 0 for these all events. But here you have to cal calculate. Now you are starting here at 17. That means you can finish it at 17. That means you can start here at 7. Right? Now you see a difference here, right? What's the difference? 7 minus 3, 4. 17 minus 4. Now this particular event has a float, a free float for this particular event that is 4. That means you can start this event at 3rd day or you can start it at 7. You have 4 days of a float. Okay, now remember, these formulas are very important when you are sitting for the PMP exam. You will be asked to calculate the float available for event or the whole project. So I have given uh, TF stand for total float. A float for an event or it can be for the whole project as the question asked from you. The equation is TF equals LF minus ES minus D. Here, ES minus D, you can take the minus sign out and you have ES plus D. Your ES plus D, you get your EF. So I can substitute here EF. That's, we have another equation. And similarly, we can have minus ES here, LF minus D, you end up with L, LF minus D. You can have ls that gives your the equation so i think we have completed a decent knowledge on critical path method see you next time thank you